Hey, what's up? I am Michelle B. This is Channel Nodes, a channel dedicated to helping YouTubers that inspire and educate to thrive on YouTube. And in this video, I am doing my monthly review, which is not really so monthly, is it? This is a practice that I like to do frequently, let's say quarterly, where I look at how my channel is going, I look at what's working, what's not working, I look at my income, I track stats, and I work on overall improving my YouTube channel. So the channel that I look at is not actually this channel, Channel Nodes, it is my other channel, Michelle B, which is my main channel. So the first thing that I want to talk about is income. I know that income is a very sensitive topic. I'd like to ask everyone to be respectful in the comments when they hear about the money that I make. It's not an excessive amount, but I feel like I need to add that because money is quite a sensitive topic. I work incredibly hard on my YouTube channel. Essentially, I have two full-time jobs. What I do is not effortless, despite what a lot of people believe it is worth being paid for. And as YouTubers, I'm sure that you are the people that understand that the most, but I feel like it's something that I need to say. So income is something that I really want to track over time because it's something that I'm really working on building up. The more income that I make, the more content that I am able to create. Essentially, I'm trying to buy myself more time. In amazing news, I'm actually going part-time soon because the income that I'm making from YouTube is enough that I am able to go part-time. And I'm only working on building that income every day. Firstly, I want to talk about a kind of crazy source of income and the fact that it even still brings in revenue kind of baffles me and that is income from Gumroad. So Gumroad is a platform that I use to sell my ebook which is my 30 days to simplify ebook. I made this ebook quite a while ago and it still sells consistently even though I don't really promote it. It's not a crazy amount but it's enough that I look forward to it every week. So my total this month from Gumroad was about 700 Australian dollars which is pretty awesome considering. I'm so happy that that actually does still make an income because I put a lot of effort into that ebook. It was kind of a test case for me just to see like, how do you write an ebook? Like, what does this process look, process look like? How long is it gonna take me? And I definitely learned a lot along the way, but it's awesome that it's still making me an income because a lot of work did go into it. Then sponsorships. So this month I earned about $2,027 from sponsorships. That was just for one sponsorship. And then through AdSense, I earned $1,541. So 700 plus, 700 plus in total, it's about 4,200-ish. So that is pre-tax. I'm on a big journey to widen my income baskets and that's something that I actually want to document and share with you guys as well. So I expect videos on that in the future. I want to go down all of the different avenues that there are for earning an income on YouTube and I want to sort of document my journey along the way and show you. Now I want to talk about another sort of artificial measurement that I do like to track and that is my subscriber count. So the last time that I did one of these review videos, that was about six months ago. I was at 170k. So I'm now at about 236 6K. I've grown about 60k in six months, which is pretty good. Keep in mind, the more that you grow on YouTube, the more that you grow on YouTube. It's absolutely exponential growth. In my first few mm, years, really, <laughs> growing even a few hundred in a month was amazing. So let's talk about what worked with my videos in September. My videos for the month were How to Be Nice to Yourself, A Meat Lover's Guide to Going Vegan, Five Things That Have Improved Our Lives Recently, and that was a collab video, and A Productive Day Vlog. So the things that worked, How to Be Nice to Yourself, that video worked really well, not in terms of views, it didn't reach a huge amount of people, but I got a really awesome response from it and it was a video that I absolutely loved doing. The next thing that's been working has been creating my own little style. So in my productive day vlog, I actually got a whole bunch of comments saying, I love the style of this video, I love the little notes that you've added, like it just adds a little personal touch. I've been creating a bunch of like cute little doodles like of hearts and people and arrows and things like that that I can add to my videos and I only want to do that more and more and really embed it into my style. The next thing that has worked for me, and this is the non-surprising thing that everyone can do, and that is being really authentic. So in my productive day vlog, I was super authentic about feeling sluggish, just not feeling productive. And to me, that's really important. I get a lot of comments that say, oh, you live such a perfect life. And like, wow, I'm so jealous of the way that you live your life. And like, is your house always clean? And it can be really weighty to get those kind of comments. It adds this whole whole thing of expectation that my life is perfect, even though I know very well that it's not. But sometimes I think because I make a video for what, five minutes every single week, you don't get the full picture of my life. So it's important to show people the good and the bad. Obviously at my main channel, I don't want it to be all negative. I don't want it to be all, ugh, I feel sluggish and I don't know how to get through this. But at the same time, I think showing people 
struggles and showing people the challenges that you face is really important. It makes your content more relatable, not that that's the goal of it, um, but also it helps me to feel better to know, to know that I am not showing anyone some false perception of my life. I'm showing them my real life as much as I feel comfortable with. Things that did not work. So firstly, A Meat Lover's Guide to Vegan. Excellent premise for a video and I was really excited when I was writing down all the video plan because I was like, oh, I have so much information to share on this topic in saying that it is not relevant to my target audience. And that's something that I realized after posting it. I think it's done pretty poorly. So it's sitting at 17K views right now. And I think that is the lowest amount of views that I've gotten on a video in quite a while. My productive day vlog, even though I really enjoyed filming it, I think that it could have done with a bit more planning. So I found the editing process for that really difficult um, because I didn't actually have a full plan of how everything would flow. Whereas my previous day in the life vlog had a full blown plan. So I think that in future, if I create any productive day in the life vlogs, I want to have a bit of a plan behind them. So when I edit, it's all smooth and easy. In general, this has been quite a low month for me, but it's also a month where I haven't been putting effort into creating those really clickable videos. So it's kind of something that's happened with my knowledge. So next up, I want to talk about analytics because analytics is a really important part of YouTube that I kind of have disregarded because of the complexity. Right now, I'm still not 100% sure what analytics I want to track. It's something that I need to really sit down and think about. But for this video, I'm going to talk about watch time and I'm going to try and talk about click through. So the watch time on my productive day in the life, it's at 62%, which is pretty good. And people watch it for an average of seven minutes and 12 seconds. So it's actually the time that matters more than the percentage is what I have learned recently because YouTube want people to be on YouTube for as long as possible. So if your video is one minute and people watch 70% of it, that's amazing. But it didn't keep people on YouTube for very long. So that video has kept people watching for a pretty long period of time, seven minutes compared to my usual, which is probably more like three, four minutes. The click-through rate is 4%. So according to YouTube, most channels, it's between 2% and 10%. So if I could make the thumbnail a little bit more enticing and more clickable, then I might be able to draw in more clicks on that video and then increase the amount that YouTube actually promotes that video. I could also play around with the title of the video to make it a little bit more clickable. So already I took vlog out of the title just because I think that word, some people don't really like vlogs and so I don't want people to get the impression that it's like a normal standard vlog of me just like doing my day to day. It's very much focused on having a productive day. So the video on things that have improved our lives has a pretty poor retention rate of 44.7%. However, it kept people watching for five minutes and 43 seconds. It's a pretty lengthy video and it is a bit chit chatty as opposed to like get to the info. So I can understand why why people clicked off the video. I think in future, if I do a collab, I want to have it a little bit more planned, even though I really enjoy doing a collab with Erin. Maybe a little bit more scripted because my videos are usually quite scripted. This one obviously is not. There's a lot of chit chatting, um, but the scripting keeps things flowing. That video also has a 4.6% click through rate. So my How to Go Vegan video has a 2.9% click through rate, which is pretty bad. I think there is definitely something that I could do to make that video more clickable. I I could have like me holding a piece of meat and being like making a face. The title I feel is pretty good. I don't know, let me know your thoughts. I thought that title, while it's not like keyword rich or keyword heavy, it's something that I feel is more clickable than just like how to go vegan. So that video was a 12 minute video. God, I'm making really long videos lately. And the average view duration was six minutes and eight seconds. So 49.9%, not too bad. I really like to get 60% and above, but I realized that when I make longer videos, my audience retention probably won't be at that 60% and above all the time, unless it's a really super engaging, amazing video. And then there's how to be nice to yourself. So that's at a nice 60% audience retention rate. So people hung around for three minutes and 48 seconds, which is pretty good considering it was a six minute video. So I need to understand click through rate a little bit better. It looks like my videos seem to do around the 4% mark. I think I'd like for them to do better than that um, by creating more engaging and more captivating thumbnails. For that video in particular, I'm really happy with the thumbnail, really happy with the title, probably aren't going to change either of them. It still reached a good amount of people, about like 34k, which is pretty good and it's what I expected. Didn't expect it to blow up by any means, but I thought that it would do quite well, so happy with that. On the overall this month, it's once again, I seem to do these monthly reviews in times where I really need to focus on creating more clickable content because my last month has not been clickable content. And that's a lot due to lack of time as well, so that's something that hopefully will improve in the near future when I go part-time. 
time. <laughs> if you want to watch more of my monthly reviews, you can check them out using the playlist that is linked on the screen. I talk about my income, what's working, what's not working, and I give sort of actionable things that I can do in the future to fix, improve my YouTube channel that you can also apply to your YouTube channel. I appreciate you guys so much and I will see you soon.